Good morning, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. This is Rich again, back for the second video blog of the day for Tuesday, September 23rd, 2014, 8.05 in the morning in Bellarmine, Massachusetts. Nice and sunny right now. And my second video blog of the day is what happened 18 years ago on WWE Monday Night Raw. Jim Ross turned heel and he did a work shoot interview blasting Vince McMahon and bringing a fake Razor Ramon and fake Diesel to the WWE background on this angle. In the sp spring of 1996, Razor Ramon and Big Daddy Cool Diesel left the WWE to WCW. They couldn't use Big Daddy Cool Diesel or Razor Ramon because that was WWE trademark characters. And Razor Ramon is Scott Hall and Big Daddy Too Cool is Kevin Nash. So they left WWE for WCW Green as past just more money to start the NWO. And the WWE owned the characters of Razor Malone and Big Daddy Cool Diesel. They could, they could put that name on anybody. And WWE announced that Jim Ross, who was also the Vice President of Talent Relations for the WWE at that time, came up with an angle where he going to turn heel and bring back a fake Razor Ramon and fake Diesel. And here is here is the complete interview segment he did. This is like most of the speech. We're back from commercial and we're going to conduct this interview right now. But before I do bring back Big Daddy Cool Diesel and Razor Ramon, let me indulge with you for just a minute. Tell me what's tell you what's on my mind. I want to through telling you you're going to question my loyalty to the World Wrestling Federation. Let's clear this up. I have no loyalty to the World Wrestling Federation. I only got loyalty to good old JR. And let me tell you why. In 1993, I left Atlanta, Georgia. And I left there a great job to become the primary play-by-play -play announcer for the recognized leader of sports entertainment. And I'm the best play-by-play -play announcer in the damn business. I... I show up to WrestleMania 9 and I got a sheet to wear. And he says, Oh, you look good in a toga, JR. You look good in a toga. I leave the National Football League for a toga. It's crap. And now, and then I went to the first King of the Ring pay per view in Dayton, Ohio. You listen to that broadcast. I carry the broadcast from the ringside. And you ever wonder why, oh, JR. Is isn't doing play-by-play -play anymore. Why isn't JR doing this and that? Let me tell you why. Because the egotistical owner of the World Wrestling Federation, you know who I'm talking about, Vince McMahon, couldn't stand the competition. So JR disappeared. Then on Super Bowl Sunday, 1994, I woke up with an affliction called Bell's Palsy. You, you think this is funny? My left eye doesn't open up? The... All the way, and how how this you don't like look look way my face is, how I got sick. Tell me how warm-hearted Mr. McMahon is. Mr. McMahon called me into his office on February 11th, 1994, and he fired my ass. And then I'm going to go do I drive home to that overpriced hellhole in Connecticut, and I have to tell my wife and my two little girls. Why Daddy got fired. And oh, remember when McMahon got indicted? They needed somebody to call Ra, so they called on good old JR. And then they let me go again. And finally, they let me come back to work in the front office. 50 cents on the dollar. And all these guys leaving the WWF is no accident? Oh, hell no. All these guys coming back to the WWF. W.E. is an excellent home note. I've been very busy. And now, I'm going to bring back one of your favorites. He's the bad guy. Razor Ramon. And then a Razor Ramon comes. But it's not the real Razor Ramon. It's a fake Razor Ramon. It's a, it's a, it's a Razor Ramon who is, was an independent na wrestler named Rick Boga. And then he says to, how do you like, how do you like this McMahon? How do you like Razor Ramon, WWE fans? 
And how does it feel to be back in the WWE, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, you gotta say hello to the bad guy. Then the fake ladies and gentlemen was attacked by Savio Vega. And then the law goes off the air. And the next week, the fake Big Daddy Cool Diesel shows up, who was played by Glenn Jacobs, who had other characters like Isaac Yankum, DDS, and the Unabomber in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. And it was the rumor was going around there was going to be a fake one, two, three kid who was going to be played by Steve Carino. And this angle of Jim Ross turning heel, he was blasting McMahon's announcing skills and stuff like that. And it was it was a decent angle. And the next pay per view in your house, buried alive. When, like, Vince McMahon came to do play-by-play, -play, and it was Jerry the King Lawler and Jim Ross, and when Jim Ross was saying stuff, there was some troubles with the mic and stuff like that. It was probably Vince doing that. And then Vince, v JR got mad, and he conducted an interview and said, says, I've been pulled up by the egotistical owner of this company, and they flew it off, and then... Vince makes a good catch with it. And this angle was kind of building onto something I heard. This angle was supposed to lead to a WrestleMania 13 match between Jim Ross and Vince McMahon for ownership of the WWE. And I heard something Jim Ross was going to win because of interference from the fake Razor Ramon, fake Big Daddy Cool Diesel, and the fake 123 Kid. But the fake 123 Kid never debut because the Razor Ramon and the Diesel did not get over with the fans, and when they did not get over with the fans, the whole JR heel angle blasting Vince McMahon was dropped, and eventually Jim Ross and and Vince McMahon, like, they didn't have any bickering when they were announcing together. And this angle, when I saw it, when I heard about this, it would have been a cool angle to see Jim Ross beating wrestling Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 13. JR would have been the heel, Vince would have been the face, and this was about a year or two before the Mr. McMahon character, and Vince playing a sympathetic baby face. I don't know how that would have worked, and then he getting beaten, and then I don't know how long this angle would have lasted, but it would, it would have been a nice angle, but you know, the fans didn't buy the new Big Daddy Cool Diesel of Razor Ramon. They looked at him as fakes, and it was probably kind of a low point in WWE having two wrestlers portray Razor Ramon and Big Daddy Cool Diesel who want the, the real deals and stuff like that. And also some of the references JR made with Mr. McMahon and ass that was a prelude to the Mr. McMahon character for a few years later. And... And I think maybe JR foreshadowed something with a f what was going on in the future with the Mr. McMahon character. But when, when you know, he's portrayed v Vince McMahon as somebody as sympathetic, what that was, you know, kind of sad, in my opinion, this thing and stuff like that, a work show, shoot interview, was one of the first times that somebody acknowledged Vince McMahon on the air as WWE. Iona, because for many years Vince McMahon was a play-by-play -play voice of the WWE, and not too many, a lot of fans knew he was the owner of the WWE, but they didn't say it on television at all. I think this was one of the first times it was acknowledged, and stuff like that. And I give this heel turn by JR maybe a four or five. It could have had more potential if. Razor Ramon, if the fake Razor Ramon and Diesel got over and then they added a fake one, two, three kid. That, that, even though people would say that's kind of like a, like with the imitations, it, this had some potential, but the fans didn't buy it. And you cannot have an angle these days where, where in the storyline with Vince McMahon losing ownership to the WWE to somebody because the WWE is on the stock market and the investors would be a, say if, if Vince McMahon's no longer an owner, they'll be sell, they'll try to sell it like crazy to stock. And the storyline, but it's a storyline, professional wrestling is sports entertainment, and the stockholders, stockholders will get mad, and they probably sell, sell their shares of stock, and it probably raise a lot of money. But the WWE will never be sold, ever. Mc, the McMahon family will never sell the WWE, period. 
Unless if they got a crazy offer by somebody, which is too, which they'll, they'll be nuts to turn down. And that's about it on that. I will be back this afternoon for another J Jim Ross heel turn in 1999. This time when he slapped the hell out of Bart Gunn because Bart Gunn beat um, his boy, Dr. Death Steve Williams, on an interview se segment on March of 1999. And Dr. Death Steve Williams attacked him, and I'll tell you how I think that angle should have been played out, and it could have been something that Dr. Death could have been a major plan to WWE. See you later, Facebook friends and YouTube followers. Bye now.